When people ask where I live and I say Chester, the usual response is, look at you, gorgeous city. And it is. This year in particular, being able to walk by the river, the meadows, the canal and the parks has been key to many people's physical and mental well-being. Another response is, oh, posh. The advantage of being a relatively compact city means that potentially everyone can have their say, whether from the posh or less posh parts of this one city. How can people who feel excluded from the city feel more included? Maybe the less central parts of the city could be more acknowledged and celebrated. So how did Blaken, mentioned in the Doomsday Book as having 12 households, then evolve into once being one of the largest council housing estates in Europe? What's the late larder all about? Would this more inclusive approach really help to make the culture of the city belong to all its residents? Uh, my name is Jim, and this is this is Brack, um, and I'm part of the Nexus Techno Collective here in Chester. Um, we put on parties and have a radio show um, that are inclusive and um, non-profit. My name's Debbie, and I'm the senior coordinator at Live in Cheshire, and we work with young people, children, and adults with disabilities and additional needs. As a student at the University of Chester, I have worked with lots of children and young people, including students of the University of Chester. I'm Kamisa. I'm Zazie. We live in the centre of Chester. I have been the president and musical director of the University's Drama Society, as well as choral scholar for the University Choir. Yes, I'm Rashid, who is an international student from Jordan. We grew up in Cape Town, we used to live in Cape Town, and there's always food festivals and markets and stuff like that, so after Corona has decided to go away, yeah. um, we would really enjoy like food markets, maybe like stores. Like yeah. We need to bring um, more interactive things back into the city centre, so for example, like the giant parade that lots of organisations got, involved with. We have got a multicultural society in Chester and I think it'd be great if we could have a festival bringing everything together. Maybe we like celebrate a different culture. Yeah, every month. And what we'd really love to see is a bit more use of those sort of closed spaces, things like shops and things that are currently empty and it'd be great to be able to hire those on like a, a slightly shorter term basis um, than you currently can just to give people like us and other people putting on events in Chester, whether that's visual arts or music or anything like that, um, a bit more scope to kind of use these spaces in a more interesting way. I heard so much about Chester and the fact that it's a historical city and um, it's not that big, it's not a very large city. Although we have opportunities to perform within the university setting, we don't have that many opportunities to showcase our talents within the city centre. But it could go on for like the weekend or uh, for a week. So there's lots of different cultural things going on that people can get involved in. You could also have like live music and like involve schools and stuff, like bring their choirs and you know sing in the centre, fun songs, songs from musicals. It would be really exciting if we got more of the opportunity to perform and showcase our skills within the city and also become part of the community. And because we work with people with disabilities, um, they enjoy the the process to get to the the parade so making all the costumes making all the things that they need for the parade and um, getting involved that way and for us it's about our people being part of a bigger community oh like, yeah art 
artwork like hung like a cross you know how they do the christmas lights unfortunately shortly after our arrival to the, to the university of chester the pandemic happened and everything was put on hold and all shops got closed celebrating like the black lives matter movements and stuff just like involving political affairs in it in a way that's accessible for everyone it would be amazing our ideal would be to be able to use one of those spaces as like a community run or volunteer run um, non-profit space for um, gallery shows or dance performances or live music A tale of a city, from Iron Age to present day. A series of plays narrated by the voices of a family throughout the generations, each era building and recreating the city, bringing the stories of the history of Chester to life. A tale of a river as it meanders through the town. A visual history told in a travelling show with the colour and the magic of the Chester mystery plays. Sing, sing. Sing, deck, sing. What are you doing? I'm marching like the Roman soldiers used to do around Chester. Sing, sing. I would like to see more Roman soldiers. That would be a really good idea, but actually I don't fancy marching around with them, but I'd like to learn about them. Um, please um, download an app or you can go to the Tobit information for a headset. That would be a brilliant idea. So you think Chester should have an app with the Roman information on or a headset to provide for people to walk around Chester and learning about it. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Enric. Imagine these wonderful robes, unique to Chester, brought back to life through cutting-edge technology. Museum of Retail. Something that would really come alive at night. A walk along a darkened row becomes a blaze of light, colour and sound as I walk past. On my phone is an app, which I've bought online a little earlier allowing me to access all the units involved in Chester's Museum of Retail. Taking inspiration from St Fagin's Folk Museum near Cardiff, or the row of terraces in Ellesmere Port's Boat Museum, a row of empty shops along one of Chester's rows has been converted to show their evolution. From Anglo-Saxon workshops making and selling their own craft to the Victorian department store. So that visitors could see how they were in medieval times, brimming with activity. We could even bring back these empty shops um, with silversmiths, leather workers, other craft studios linked to the original guilds of Chester. A touch on my screen and the nearest shop opens so I can step inside. The interior is glazed in a horseshoe shape and behind it is the Anglo-Saxon shop. As I point my phone, the shop comes to life on my screen with virtual reality people going about their business. A single row of shops could show how the same goods were sold through time, for example baking or leather work. After I've finished there, I'm ready for a little more culture and I would finish my visit in the Three Arches. Well known as one of the oldest shop fronts in the country, it has now been converted into a conventional museum devoted to the history of the rows. How and why they developed and changed through time. 
A few weeks later, I returned to Chester for something that has become famous, Chester's Retail Event. Now when I enter the shops, the virtual reality app has been temporarily disabled and real people are on the other side of the glass enacting a scene from the history of Chester. Wouldn't that be fantastic, right in the heart of the city and such a draw for, for visitors and residents alike? A city centre resident said, wouldn't it be great to use the rose each month as sort of pop-up art galleries, art spaces, either for schools or for community groups? And wouldn't it be magic if the larger buildings were let out to multiple small shopkeepers or craftspeople at a minimum rent, spanning a spectrum of specialities from woodworkers to clothes designers? There could also, of course, be coffee bars, small performance spaces within the building. These try-out shops could see if their retail idea was a goer, and then, if successful, go on to rent a bigger space in another part of the city. Sort of, come try out your shop idea and if it works, then launch yourself commercially, creating a constant circle of new ideas as other people then took over their old space, revitalising the city centre by having multiple one-off shops. And so, the loss of people to the out-of-town malls was minimised as you're not competing with the global corporate brands. Years and years ago, the streets of Chester were filthy with all the animals going around and all the dirt that was thrown along there. And if people wanted to keep clean, they'd use the roads to walk along. You, you, it's clean and tidy today. Oh, right, the, road, the roads and pavements are clean and tidy, so what can, do we use the roads for? Um, we could use it for theatre space. Theatre space? What a great idea, Rick. What, have performances up on the rows and people watching down below? Yes. That's great. Oh, yeah, I think that's great. What, what could be wrong with that? If you're in a wheelchair, you can't get up there. Ah, if in a wheelchair, you can't get up there. So let's think. What could we use for a wheelchair person to get up onto the top? A lift. A lift, yeah, but we don't want a modern lift like they have in fancy shops. What we could use is a man-powered lift. Perhaps we could have a static bike. And what could we do on a static bike? Um, ride it and, and um, store the energy. The power made for it would be stored in, the, in a, a battery yeah. and that would be used for operating the, the lift. Would that yeah. work? Yes. That sounds a great idea. Well done, Rick.
So I have a vision of a massive billowing sail-like structure that's constructed over the area of the cross and reaches down the arterial roads leading to the cross. There would be a commissioning pot of money available annually that would see a company producing work for that space that could be cross art form, so a stunning visual arts installation where perhaps things are hung from some of those beautiful old walls and, and people look up and see whatever the vision might be. Or perhaps a circus performance with aerial artists or big orchestral music sort of blasting from the walls. This particular activity would be overseen by local partners theatre in the quarter who would hone the artistic delivery and contribute towards it and help ensure local residents involvement. This activity could spill round the corner to the town hall square and would be ab available for anyone to experience, making sure that those that wouldn't normally buy a ticket to a formal event could become an accidental audience as they walk through town. The commissioned company could also be asked to run workshops with local artists, leaving tangible skills behind as a legacy uh, for the work. And maybe that company has a relationship with the city for two or three years, building on uh, the experience that they've had um, as, as they go, go through. Many visitors to Chester stopped to take a photograph of the Eastgate clock, allegedly the second most photographed clock in the UK after Big Ben. But keep on looking up during the daytime and there are wondrous building facades in their black and white splendour and some stunning architecture all across the four city centre streets. But these disappear at night time. The streets are well lit for safety purposes, but the beauty of the buildings above street light level is lost. Let's get them lit properly so the city is exposed after dark. Let's install hidden projectors to help celebrate cultural festivals by putting imagery on the sides of buildings. Chinese New Year, Easter, Christmas, Diwali, Pride, the winter and summer watch parades, Chester mystery plays. Chester at night should be a destination for all, not just the revellers. The evening market has been a tremendous success and must be allowed to carry on delighting diners when it moves to its new venue. And Story House continues to thrive, but let's make the city light up at night so we can look up and enjoy the sights. Light up and look up in Chester. I've often heard people say that nothing ever happens in Chester, where's the culture? Many people however would disagree as they support and enjoy the wealth of events happening in so many settings throughout the year. Chester is full of surprising places, upstairs room and outside spaces, perfect for exhibitions and performances. This period seems to be one of potential discovery, mapping what's already here, what's already happening throughout the year and building on that. No doubt this exists already, but could it be more effective? How can existing resources be shared, used and maximised across the city, not just the city centre? Is it possible to work more closely together and think of resources as ours, for example outdoor cinema screens rather than buying more costly equipment? How can we map out what's happening and market an even more inspiring comprehensive programme of cultural and arts events? If we get it right for the locals, maybe we'll get it right for the region. Here are a few off the wall ideas. There are a lot of pizza places in town. A few years ago, pizza makers in Naples got together to make the world's longest pizza. Could we do something similar here in Chester? A giant pizza cooked in Town Hall Square with free slices for the crowds pizza races through the city centre or a really good fast food street festival. 
What about an organised busker's festival? There's loads of talent out there. Or a city centre jazz or folk festival. Could we hang a zip wire from the city walls by the groves way across the river to Hambridge? Or more a boat above the Northgate locks and use it as a stage with the audience seated in that Greek theatre-shaped terraced bank below the walls? Guided historical pub tours around the city centre pubs. We know publicans who could provide the tasting expertise and I could do the history. The museum has got a nice art gallery room that would be good for poetry reading, small musical ensembles or storytelling. Is there anything that could be done with all those underground car parks? Stagings of Orpheus and Eurydice? Scenes from Dante's Inferno? Projected images of Ice Age cave paintings? Sonne Lumiere around the castle and the cathedral? And why not bring the mystery plays back where they belong? into the streets. What do I remember about this little city Chester? I guess sir, uh, the walls that surround her, the East Gate clock tower, the cross we all encounter. Oh and yes sir, uh, the Roaring Dee River, the Rose Rower, buildings a storyteller. What about the half amphitheater, the vast race courser, and the grand cathedral? Oh, how I remember this little city of Chester.